Today we're going to take a look at the Hilliard Bully conversion drum clutch, otherwise known as the Hilly. So we're going to assemble this clutch to run it inboard. That would be where the driver is closest to the engine. Outboard would be where it's closest to the seat. First we'll start with our backing plate and drive hub and we'll orient the shoes for an inboard aggressive position. Now these shoes can be placed a number of various ways to make them aggressive or less aggressive. If you were to push the shoes so that the heel of the shoe itself is being pushed, it makes a more aggressive engagement. If you pull the shoes where the driving lugs will pull that shoe in the outward position here, that's a more gradual engagement. Of course, you see there's holes here that we can do uh, infinite adjustments with light and heavy weights and, and alternating weights. Also, some guys will do what's called an X on the clutch where they'll alternate the direction of the shoes. Instead of running them all in the same direction, they'll alternate and run them in the shape of an X. This is something that you're welcome to experiment with. That's why we have a lot of different options and adjustability in the Hilliard Bully clutches. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sit in the most aggressive inboard position. Take these guys back out. Inboard, this drive hub will be in this direction. So these shoes would all go in that orientation. And now we're going to need to install the springs. There's two ways to spread the spring so that it goes over the shoes and holds them together. One is to use a pair of needle nose pliers and spread this apart. It helps if you have heavier tips in it. I'm not going to do it that way today. I'm going to do it the way I usually do. We're going to use a needle, or a, I'm sorry, a, a regular screwdriver. And I'm going to hold this down on the bench with just another tool so that it doesn't get away from me and possibly hurt someone or get lost in the shop. So I'll gently spread that spring and it should slide right down into place. I'll go ahead and do a black spring next since we're going to alternate these springs. This would be a typical setup for the LO206 adult class. And I may need to spread this one just a little bit more. No, there it goes. I get them in that far and then I'll go ahead and tap them. You can use a ball peen hammer if you've got another wrench that you don't mind wasting. Do that. We'll go ahead and spread a few more. I'm going to go ahead and use the tool to hold it down. Get it just a little wider. And our final spring. Sometimes you'll find they don't go in on the first try. You can flip them over. It might be a little closer to one end than the other. Be very careful if these things slip out. I always protect myself by hanging on to the spring. And if you need to, just grab it again. Go a little deeper. And they do occasionally go flying off the bench. That's why I try to keep my hand on it. So there's our springs installed. Now the next piece to go on this clutch is a spring retainer ring. That's the wide chrome washer that has the keyway cut in it. And then after that, you've got a grease trap or a dust cap. You'll notice that it says it has a sprocket side. That needs to go closest to the sprocket. Again, we're going to do this inboard, so that will be placed up. You don't need to worry about holding the keyways in place right now, but it's just good to indicate it that way so we know where we're at. I use a chrome washer in this location. Sometimes it's recommended that you do. Sometimes it's recommended you don't. I like to do that on the hilly conversion because it helps keep the bearing held in place once we get the basket and driver together. So we'll move next to the basket and driver. The very first thing you'll notice is there's two tapped holes. That is a 440 thread, and this little guy here is a uh, 1 16th Allen wrench that will fit into here. This needs to be in place. 
I know some guys say they can run without them. It will keep the snap ring from rotating and coming loose. So it's important that you install this. You don't need to put any Loctite on it, just make it snug. And then we can bring our driver over here. This is a genuine bully driver. Should fit right down over and we're ready for the snap ring. An important thing, we've covered this in other articles on our Tech Talk Tuesdays, make sure that you have the correct snap ring for the driver that you're using. Bully clutches and bully drivers use a specific snap ring that are different from WMS and other brands. Make sure that you keep the snap ring married to the driver for its whole life. We'll make sure that's in place and you can see that I've made the separation of the two ends of the ears around the 440 screw. That keeps that from rotating and this driver cannot come out now. Now if this is a new clutch we'll go ahead and wipe this out with some lint free cloth. Uh, you may want to go ahead and scuff sand it just to get rid of some of the anodizing off of it. We're going to go ahead and run it through a hot lap session before we do that maintenance to it but this is what it looks like when you get a brand new one. So that would place right down over here. You've got an inner race that now goes into the bearing. I'll go ahead and pull the bearing out just so you see that. You'll see there's very little oil or grease on that bearing. That's exactly what we want to see. If you see grease on that bearing, it's too much. Grease can migrate into the clutch and ruin your clutch for you. Don't put too much grease on it. A little bit of light grease or Vaseline works just fine. You'll notice that once we have it assembled, that the inner race is proud. In other words, it's sticking up above the bearing surface. Occasionally you need to run a 30 thousandths outside washer that fits over top of that. Now that's convenient to run, especially if you're running the clutch outboard. When we're running an inboard, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll set this up in the lathe or just take a file to it and dress it shorter so that it doesn't have quite as much end play. When we get to the mounting hardware, I like to put a little bit of Never Seize again, not Loctite. You're going to be taking this clutch off after each race day to do maintenance to it. So a little dab of Never Seize, then the lock washer, then the retaining washer. There's our clutch ready for assembly. Our next video will go ahead and show you how to put it on the engine and install it correctly. Thank you for watching and sharing and are subscribing to our YouTube channel and uh, just ask that uh, you ever need anything for your four stroke or your LO206 animal flatheads, we still do those. Uh, anything for karting, we'd be glad to help you at Carlson Motorsports.